Hello and welcome to the Comedy Slab edition 190. 190. Count them. That's a bit frightening, isn't it? That means we're 10 away from another yeah. big birthday. <sighs> so I am Adrian Lacey in the southeast of England. He is Shane O'Connor. And he is in the Midlands of England. Uh, it's lovely to have you along, whether you're a regular uh, listener to the show or brand new. Uh, either way, nice to have you along. So what do we do? We put a comedy, different comedy each week, be it TV, radio, internet, podcast, whatevs. Uh, we put it on the notional slab of comedy, prod it about a bit, um, get our scalpels onto it, see what we make of it, and then give it a score out of five each, making a grand total of something, X, or is it Y, out of ten at the end of the show. Got that to look forward to. You, of course, can play along at home or indeed in your motor conveyance or wherever else you may be. Oh, well, no, actually, because they've changed the law in England mm. now. So if you're in England or the UK, I should mm. say, the wider UK, you're not, you're not allowed to... Uh, don't oh, touch your device. I'm, don't I'm, touch your mobile device. Coming in, yeah, so. today. Today? Today, yeah. You're not allowed to touch... Yeah, you can't touch anything when you're in the car now. You have to steer with your teeth. <laughs> well, you always did. And, uh, yeah. I do, you always I'm drive by the skin of your teeth. I've certainly observed that. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Really? Now it's today that you can't you can't change your podcast out. Well, can't anything, you just really. control it's, it by um, thought? I do that on Star Trek. Here's the weird thing. You can't do any of those things with yeah. your phone, but you can do all of those things with your car if it has one of these info centres on it. Queer that, eh? Well, no. What it was is a guy actually won his court case and then won an appeal at the High Court against the government. Welcome to the legal podcast. It's nice to have you along. Am I in the wrong studio again? <laughs> you're, in, you're in the wrong time zone. Is this group I therapy? <laughs> <laughs> no, down the corridor, love. Oh, um, anyway, before we get to um, <laughs> slabbing what is uh, Series 1, Episode 5 of Drop the Dead Donkey, about which more in a bit. It's pretty cruel. We've got some uh, comedy news. Now, admittedly, I did land this on you in the last few minutes. Mm. Have you had a chance to peruse thereof? Oh, yeah, definitely. Are you a speed reader? No, just normal speed. Okay. But could do you for speeding otherwise. But luckily I'd cut my toenails earlier, so I only had to do the reading and nothing else, you see. <laughs> so Right, whereas I was cutting my toenails as well as slow reading. Yes. Well, I I thought of you when I saw the magic letters ITV X. As well as eating pork scratchings. Never cut your toenails and eat pork scratchings at the no, same time. That's that's my th advice. Yeah, especially if yeah. Well, they, they ricochet anyway, don't they? You don't know where they're going to go. That's the problem. <laughs> Are we talking about pork scratchings or your toes? <laughs> both, really. Let's be honest. The way I eat and they're it. both hairy, aren't they? That's, <laughs> you can't distinguish. <laughs> yeah. Although, whether you have hairy nails, that's probably a first sign of madness. Do you know, what I liked about this news story that you sent me was that it's yeah. quite obvious that you were listening when we were talking about ICVX a couple of episodes ago. You know, you were there. You were in the room, weren't you? Quite, I was quite actually good. paying attention, which, as you know, is not situation normal. But we both got slightly aroused, embarrassingly, by the letters ITVX. Hello and welcome Hello. to ITVX. It's that letter X on the end. It's just a bit subversive, isn't it? We, we couldn't figure it out, could we? Let's be honest. We were kind of thinking, well, you know, um, it, it's a new channel. Why make it Why make it smutty? You know, be proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this ITVX is replacing, soon enough, I believe, the ITV hub. And, you see, the Hubba hasn't got the same resonance, has it? So, unless, um, unless they called it ITV Hubba Hubba Hubba. <laughs> <laughs> With Elvis doing the promo. <laughs> well, anyway, um, I got quite excited, not about the X, but about the fact that they are putting on five, count them, five different comedies. Now, is it clear whether they're five series or they could just be five single episodes, which, you know, Channel 4's done before now under the guise of a sort of um, a series of pilots, as it were. Mm. Which the, the BBC did to great effect, didn't they, with Ronnie Barker's Seven of One, of course. 
Ah, yes, as you were referring to not so very long ago. Anyway, were you at least pleased that there's some uh, new comedy? Well, I was until I read, <laughs> until I read the synopsis and I, and I thought to myself, it sounds very much like an explosion in a script factory. <laughs> Um, well, uh, that would, that could be quite funny, as long that, as no yeah, one that, gets genuinely hurt. Could be at least a sketch, couldn't it, that one? Um, yeah, when I, and I thought, oh, that's that's good. You know, five original um, commissions there. That's that's nice to see, and, and more grist to the mill for us. But then, mm. but then I read the short synopsis. About, I mean, it's, it's this is a game of two halves. I read the short synopsis, and I thought, oh, dear. Yeah, but I don't think you should judge something um, by a synopsis any more you should, than you should judge a book by its cover. Well, I'd like to judge a book by its cover. I mean, I must admit, I, I've had a, a version of the Holy Bible, uh, New Testament, mm. I hasten to add, for some time now, and the cover on it is rubbish, but what a great read it is. Um, <laughs> is that the know? orange one, New English version? The orange one? Mm. You can tell you're not a Catholic, can't you? In church, so bring, bring that book with you as well, the orange one. <laughs> <laughs> Turned up with Delia Smith's best home recipes. <laughs> it wasn't I'm not, what we wanted at all. I'm not saying it's old, your edition, but it's 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 autographed by the uh, by, Jesus. by, the, by yes. the author. Yeah? Um, <laughs> so p- putting that, if we may, to one side. Um, mm. Now. I know that you might have prejudged one or two of these. For instance, if we say Count Abdullah, <laughs> uh, we're talking from the makers of Fudge Park, which itself sounds like a joke. No, no, the company's um, called Fudge Park. Oh, sorry, Fudge Park, who made White Gold. Which was the brilliant. festival. Thank you for saving me from untold embarrassment. I've never seen the festival, but White Gold, I, I've in the back of my mind, is there to be slabbed because... Um, it's set in the 1980s, and it's about mm. um, um, double glazing salesmen. Oh, and it's awesome. Does that mean white frames are gold? To him? Yeah, white, it's what we're selling white gold. You know, it's like it's it's, it's uh, a great way to to make uh, huge amounts of money. I thought it was I thought it was really really clever. It didn't really get off. The, it was a BBC Two. Well, we know they can make a, a, a decent series then, so I would suspend disbelief. It's terrible, uh, though, isn't it? This kind of, you know, a British Pakistani Muslim junior doctor. Why don't they ever have, you know, a, a, a Welsh Catholic unicorn? <laughs> I, I don't understand why. What's the obsession? Well, with- maybe they have. And anyway, um, maybe it didn't test well with, uh, you know, test audiences. I don't know. But I know there are British Pakistani Muslim junior doctors who are based in London. Yeah, there's Irish um, ones as well and there are, there are Greek yeah, ones and, and there are I'm ones sure from Egypt. And... Over time we've had all manner of doctors represented on our screens. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we've had too many doctors on our screens who've been bitten by a, a halal hunting vampire. Oh, I can hear the jokes now. You see... It's prejudice, that's what it is. Exactly I don't mean is. racially, it's just prejudging. Oh, I've never liked from... vampires. Never li- <laughs> you never like what? I've never liked vampires. I'm prejudiced against them. <laughs> you loved that vampire show, I What did, We Slept. What, what, yeah, we did in the show, what We Do in the Shadows, yeah. Something but, like but, that, yeah. But even, I mean, that's room for two series, and even that, I kind of think, is stretching it. And also, there's a fantastic name associated with the next one on the list, and I'm reading from comedy.co.uk. It's in their news as we speak. Deep fake neighbour wars. Now, that title didn't fill me with uh, pleasure and anticipation until I saw it's been created by Prop Comedian, which is not the best label we could have given him. Uh, it just makes him sound like a mechanic. Uh, Spencer Jones, whom we love, do we not? Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, I mean, he's he's apparently there's a there's a TV format comes out in New Zealand called Neighbours at War. I think I've seen it, where it's it's like a real mm. a real thing documentary of, of neighbours um, setting fire to each other's sheds and stuff like that. And mm. so this is a spoof of that. I, I, that that was the one that filled me the least with excitement. I think, although as you say, with Spencer Jones um, behind it, you do kind of think, well, maybe it's got some something going for it then. Uh, the Family Pile, um, this is about grief and uh, a comedic exploration of grief. Well, again, that can almost sound like a contradiction in terms, but I think, as with literature, I think with comedy, there should be no safe havens where there, the, the, there are subjects which are completely off limits. 
Mm. I'll probably contradict that at various other stages, but that's how I feel at the moment. When I read that, the comedic exploration of grief, I thought the person in the press office hasn't <laughs> seen this and hasn't really got a handle on what it's all about. Um, but and again, this this was a kind of oh dear, the family pile, a comedic exploration of grief. Uh, mm. Which bucket do I stick my head into? And then, <laughs> and then I saw it's written by Brian Dooley, who who um, wrote the fabulous uh, the smoking room, which starred um, Robert Webb. Now that's an amazing thing because I haven't thought about the smoking room for years. I mean, I lose count of how many years it is since that. It's a mm. long time ago now. It is it? a very long time ago. Yeah. And finally, significant other, uh, which is not a term of endearment to you, uh, dear Shane or undear Shane, um, this is a neighbourly romance. I'm feeling your heart sinking again. And yet, it's made by Key Street, who we all know. What do we know, Key Street? I don't know Key Street, but no, um, I'm no. sure we've slabbed something of theirs. I think you'll find it's pronounced quay, but I don't want to make you look a fool. <laughs> <laughs> OK, high time to move on to the show in question, uh, which is going on the old virtual slab. Uh, which is Drop the Dead Donkey, it's Series 1, Episode 5. You'll find it, certainly in the UK, on All4 or Channel4.com, much the same thing. Mm. And what was your feeling? Did you get a, an excited shiver down the spine when I put it on the slab, or did you feel otherwise? Yeah, no, I, well, yeah. I mean, I think I mentioned last week, um, I can't remember whether I just thought it or whether I mentioned it, um, mm. that I I've never revisited this, which is really unusual for me, because because particularly with uh, all four mm. um, and their um, huge back catalogue that they've very generously put out there, um, the whole of the whole of this is all, all series of this is available, isn't it, on the um, Channel Four website? Well, you seem to find it more easily than me. I could only see series one, but I was clearly rushing. There's a little uh, drop down box. It's not unless you're familiar with the site. It's not easy. It's no somebody. I'm not taking them here. Oh, I, got, I, I thought they displayed them all on the on the top. No, you have to you have to not. click like the series you want, and then it just produces those episodes from that series. But right. uh, but no, they are all available. Um, but yeah, so I I was just like thinking, oh, I wonder how this is going how this is going to travel through time. It's been mm. interesting to see, be an interesting concept. Well, we look forward to getting your verdict on how indeed it has travelled through time. So it's set in a fictional newsroom. I believe we're talking 1990, this particular one. That's mm. when it started, so we're on series one. It must be that. Um, I mean, it's quite salutary to hear them reference Margaret Thatcher at one point, or a, a number of points. Um, so that's the era era we're in. Um, so depending on whether you're of a certain age, you may or may not have seen this first time around. Fictional newsroom, uh, but very topical. I believe they recorded a scene or two very close to transmission, meaning that they could be ultra topical. Uh, of course, these days it needs footnotes. Um, we're not really the people to uh, remember anything. So fortunately, uh, if you're watching the show, you get uh, a little set up uh, in voiceover form at the top of the show. And uh, it's a hat trick production. And what more do you need to know? In this particular episode, you've got the sort of uh, curmudgeonly old newsreader, male um, uh, chappy, although there is there's a female sidekick as well. We meet at various points. Um, but his nephew is uh, a bright young thing, uh, obviously had a good education, and he's come for a bit of um, work experience or at least work observation. Um, so we hear him at the end of this particular clip. Uh, but to begin with, uh, we hear how um, the curmudgeonly newsreader um, has struggled a bit to get anything out of the minister who is there on sort of too many preconditions. I won't talk about this. I won't talk about that. So Alex, uh, a female Alex, we hear at the top of this clip. Uh, she's the assistant editor to George. He's the editor proper. Uh, she's saying to him about uh, how we need to sort of wrestle back control from government ministers. George, we've just got to stop ministers dictating the terms of these interviews. And you know what will happen if we do? We won't get any more ministers to interview. Every time a big story breaks, the BBC will be interviewing the Prime Minister for her response. We'll be getting the government reaction from a plumber who wants to block a drain for Kenneth Baker's wife. It'll be a laughing stock. 
Now, the plain reality is we either play by their rules or not at all. Mm, not quite how you imagined it, eh, Jack? Well, actually, it's quite interesting, because we had several lectures about exactly this sort of situation. You see... Oh, sorry, I'm holding you up. No, no, Jack, yeah. How do you mean, this sort of situation? Oh, you know, where subtle pressures from government inhibit program makers so that they become a bit, well, passive. Being pragmatic is not the same as being passive. And unlike your lecturers, I have to live in the real world. Uh, George, there's an escaped hippo in the fast lane of the M25. Do you want a crew to cover it? Definitely. <laughs> Where was I? Living in the real world. Oh, yes. Jack, of course, is the uh, the young upstart. He's a nephew, mm. isn't he, of the curmudgeonly newsreader Henry Davenport. I hate the way you keep looking at me every time you say curmudgeonly. I don't know why. <laughs> That's another word you associate with me as well, is it? Curmudgeonly. Uh, not just the word, the whole sense uh, of it. Um, I tell you, that's style. Outrageous, outrageous. Anyway, I will be wanting a headline. Uh, my headline, uh, pure and simple, is uh, today's news is tomorrow's fish and chip paper. Oh, does that mean you feel it's out of date? Oh, from my misinterpreting. No, you, you, you've you've interpreted completely right. Um, no, I just I didn't travel well at all. I can see why I haven't gone back to it. I, mean, I don't know if it's a conscious thing that I didn't go back to it. Have you ever watched it since it went? It was originally broadcast. Uh, I watched one recently, by which I mean very recently in the last month, which made me think, oh, yes, this is uh, uh, destined for the slab. The interesting thing I found is that I remember how they used to bang on about how clever it was and how cutting edge and oh, look at them and they're, they're, you know, even now when you look back at it, they said, oh, they used to make up the last scene would be done the day before and mm. blah, blah, blah. And, but it doesn't, it doesn't have that. It doesn't have that feeling when you, when you look at what's achievable now, it doesn't seem to have that. Do you get what I mean? It doesn't. It doesn't seem to have the edge that we thought it did, or they like to pretend it did. Well, aren't you judging it by different criteria? Today's criteria. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I never. I remember watching it at the time and never really thinking. Well, I didn't think it was that clever or different or new or um, on it um, to mm. use a. The phrase of today. I, I don't know. I, I, I always used to think, oh, I wonder what the fuss is. I, never, I didn't think it was bad. I used to enjoy watching it. Mm. But Friday night TV, wasn't it, as well? It was after the pub TV, this was, wasn't it? I'm pretty certain. Was it? I think yeah, so. That yeah. Rings a vague bell. Did you, did you feel like it had a cutting edge to you then? I mean, did you, do you, do you still get that sense of it now? Or, or did I, you at the time? I think I was, I was happy to cut it some slack because I think it's, it's a tough cookie, but they managed to get identifiable. Uh, archetypes, if I can call them that. Um, and I, I think it also it would translate to people who don't know the news business at all uh, into, you know, everyday uh, office environments, um, which would make it very identifiable to, to, to a wider public. I, I see. I'm surprised because I would have thought... Um this is so I quite like Andy Hamilton's writing, and I remember we slabbed um, the uh, old Harry's game that he wrote. Do you remember that? Yeah, I was thinking that only today. <clears throat> um, yeah, which you didn't like very much, did you at all? I seem to remember that you weren't very keen on on that. And I thought mm. this is a very similar style of writing. I thought you know the kind of gag structure is so obviously because it's Andy Hamilton's written it written it again. Mm. I don't know what it is about his writing, but you kind of it's you can identify the the kind of way that he in the same way that you know like Ricky Gervais kind of acts in the same way. Mm. I, f I feel there's a there's a kind of signature to I can't really describe how how it is that I know it. I mean, maybe because I just seen the name on the start of it. I don't know. That's cheating. <laughs> cheating, isn't it, really? <laughs> that means you can't identify it. Yeah. I, I have to say, I really admire the way you're flossing and talking at the same Thank time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's I a, just... Uh, it's a very I, stylish act, if you can pull it off. I just... Uh, yeah, thanks for that. It's, uh, I've just stabbed myself in the eye with it twice, but... Um, <laughs> well, you're obviously using it in the wrong part of your face. I'll play a tune before we finish, anyway. And we'll, uh, yeah, like we'll, a, a, we'll... a Jaws harp or a Jews harp, as it Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah we look forward to that. Did, did, did the, the audience 
I thought were, were a bit rubbish. That's what I knew. Did you think they were? I, a bit... I would have thought that Andy Hamilton would want to um, take them back and get another one <laughs> from the from the audience shop. Um, we we heard a case in point, but but what it says to me is it hasn't gone to a dub where they've laid on uh, restorative uh, laughter, mm. which I find refreshing in itself. The fact they haven't faked it. Uh, if it didn't get a laugh, it didn't get a laugh. Yeah, I mean, and, s- uh, some of the guys got got nothing at all, did they? they didn't well, it was a bit long, the one about um, Ken Baker, you know, the, you know where it's going. Uh, the BBC get the Prime Minister, and, and you know, if we if we stick our oar in too much, we'll just get some, what was it, some plumber who once cleared a drain for Kenneth Baker's wife or something and and there's probably a lot of people sitting there thinking who's kenneth baker there certainly are today uh he was a government minister so uh mm. education and um uh yeah education wasn't it at that stage so, uh, it is a case of um uh, the older you are the more likely you are to get the references in the script but it doesn't necessarily follow that you'll laugh i, I find it um a brave thing uh, for Andy Hamilton to tackle, along with Guy Jenkin. Remind me where we know Guy Jenkin from. I, I don't, you know, I know you're going to ask that. I think he did, uh, he wrote, um, well, he wrote Ballot Monkeys with, with uh, Andy Hamilton. Right, because the interesting thing, I was thinking of um, Ballot Monkeys, and the interesting thing about that is what do they both have in common apart from the writers you've just referenced? Uh, which is unusual in TV, particularly comedy, TV comedy. I don't know. Uh, politics? It is this last-minute recording. Oh, of course, to, to yeah. To get yeah. it topical. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was topical, yeah. So they knew they could trust Andy Hamilton on that one because I think he'd been found not wanting on Antgar Jenkin with, uh, uh, with this very show, Drop the Dead Donkey. I'm just uh, looking at what uh, Guy has written. Outnumbered was his. <laughs> <right? laughs> Your favourite. And what we did on our holiday in 2014. That's not the full title. I mean, it's <laughs> it was made in 2014. Um, that particular one has passed me by. Outnumbered, I don't have such a visceral uh, sort of gag reflex, if you'll pardon the <coughs> pun, that you get with that one. I just always say it's like waking up in somebody else's nightmare. <laughs> uh, Which you never want to do, do you? I, no, I can't. No, it's like being covered in your own vomit, isn't it? And I always think, well, it's always, oh. always always better than being covered in your own vomit than covered in somebody else's. But uh, oh. um, yeah, I, thank you for that. Uh, without numbered, I don't. I mean, I'd perhaps I, maybe we should slab it one of the days because I don't think you've. Got no, I don't think we should. I don't. I don't think it's good for your health. <laughs> a fair crack of the whip, but I just, I just, it's, it's the kids in it. That just, oh, if my kids grew up like that, I would, I would be very unhappy disown them mm. yeah mm. It's... well yeah uh ricky gervais does a whole skit on why he doesn't have children now he lives in Hampstead, right um which i can't re- most of it is unrepeatable and begins with the letter c but as to how he thinks his son would turn out uh, uh, um hilarious uh, unless perhaps you, uh, you you live in Hampstead and you send your son to a very posh uh, public school uh right are we fit for a, a second audio clip or yeah, anything else you need to? No, I, the, the you were saying about that was quite a long-winded joke with the with the, mm. the Kenneth Baker thing, and I and I I don't know if it was the style at the time, and this is the difficulty, isn't it, when you're trying to judge it out of context that that I can't remember whether um, things at that time were quite wordy anyway. But did you did you have that sense of? Um, it, it it was quite wordy. Uh, not inappropriately so. Right. Um, yeah, there's not a vast amount of story in the pictures, is there, which always tends to or can very often lead to, um, you know, where else are you going to go for your humour? It's in the words. No. I, I, I don't know. I mean, this is me thinking on the hoof, which is always dangerous. But, um, I mean, they are in the trade of words, aren't they? Words and pictures in the case of TV, but yeah. it's very much the stuff of journalism, isn't it? The state and the bleeding obvious in a way, but um, uh, I don't know if that's any defence. Perhaps you're not convinced by that. I, 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 it was just a feeling that I had, and the other thing that struck me about it, which kind of shocked me in a way, because I don't ever remember it being like this, is that um, it did appear very static. Now, I know it's set in a newsroom, mm. but it was kind of more or less only set in the newsroom yes there is that um we don't 
go uh, i mean i <laughs> guess what i didn't see many episodes uh, at the time but we we don't go out on with crews do we uh, to to follow stories i don't recall that maybe they did in later series maybe they got a bigger budget i kind of thought that they did but but i don't know if it just it was in the particular episode that we chose that they didn't but i i, don't know, I just kind of I had a feeling that they that it wasn't. It, it shocked me that it was that static. I thought, "Wow, is they didn't they didn't go out? They didn't even do a, um, you know, go back to the studio and do some more stuff." Or mm. there was nothing really that 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 took us out of the newsroom, which which I, I felt didn't didn't help in a way. You know, there wasn't even a water cooler moment, was there? Where they they kind of cut away to somebody else having a conversation. Well, how much did we have water coolers then? We had Perrier for people who didn't trust running water. Mm. Um, I've never trusted running water. I don't trust Perrier, but the way it looks you know, at you. each to their own. Yes, true, true, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you felt that was a problem, did you, on your first viewing? Yeah, I, only in as much as it, it didn't then stimulate you visually. Um, and so, like on the one hand, you know, hourly is very wordy, and then uh, visually, it's it's very static. Mm. Not a great combination, is it? You know that. Um, yeah, quite quite intense. But it might have benefited from the fact that um, perhaps uh, I don't you know. I can't remember a time when in TV you didn't talk about tight budgets, but. It might have been that the other stuff on offer was similarly constrained and so it didn't sort of stand out a mile. Mm. A lot of it is to do with expectations, isn't it? How much we enjoy things. Um, you know, people wouldn't put up with the technical quality of a Hancock's half hour these days. Yes. Yeah. Um, although they might devoutly wish for the quality of writing in a, a lot of shows. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think uh, let's let's spin in our second and final audio clip and see what we make of it um and this is alex uh, talking about well she's uh responding to uh, a question from george about um uh, how they're going to cover the uh, commons debate later on so what do we expect from our world weary journo mm. maybe something like this right now alex if you could talk us through our coverage of the commons debate Oh, right. Well, uh, basically what's going to happen is that Margaret Thatcher's going to make a stirring patriotic speech calling for concerted military action, and then Kinnock's going to get to his feet and violently agree with her. <laughs> There'll be a bit of uh, flag-waving from Marcus Fox, a bit of brown-nosing from Edwina Curry, Tony Benn will liken the Gulf crisis to the Toll Puddle Martyrs, and then Tam DL will ask which way the Belgrano was going. <laughs> yes, thank you for that, Alex. Very helpful. Now... The government are banging on about impartiality again, so as we're using that photo of Kenneth Baker looking a bit smarmy, perhaps we'd better balance it with the one of Tony Benn looking like a complete nutter. <laughs> oh dear. And where have you two been? God knows. <laughs> Last thing I remember, Jack was dancing with Jenny, he was singing my way and I was falling slowly backwards. God, you look rough, Henry. Nonsense, it's his putrid off his lighting. I wonder what sort of state the boy Jack is in, eh? He's not made it in, I notice. Uh, that's youth, you see, no resilience. Yes, well, now you are here, plus we could... Don't uh... worry, I'm late. The, um, the whole northern line was out, so I decided to run it. <laughs> it leads into a lovely bit of visual humour where the two of them, Neil Pearson and uh, and uh, Henry Davenport, I can't remember the, the, uh, the actor's name, Mm. Are, both, are both just uh, just staring at him. <laughs> staring, st and, standing. And the, the timing on it is exquisite, isn't it? It just r works really well, you know. It's uh, it, just when you think they're going to say something, they don't. And then when you don't <laughs> expect them to, they do. I think the, the, the top. Of, I'm glad you played the top of that clip as well because that was that was quite a, um, a difficulty that you illustrate quite well. There is that I the, they were running through. Um, you know, um, Margaret Thatcher would do this and Neil Kinnock would do that and Edwin Wiener Curry would do that. Mm. And I found my brain tripping over itself thinking, oh, yeah, I remember her, I remember him, yeah. Oh, who? hang on, so why? And the <laughs> the Tam DL, mm. I was trying to think why I remembered the name Tam DL. Um, and 
on both occasions that I didn't get the Belgrano reference. I didn't understand why he would ask which way it was going. I think he was instrumental in questioning Thatcher on that. But that, of course, goes back to the Falklands, or at least uh, the, the the fallout from it. Was, it. was the suggestion was whether it was retreating or whether it was attacking. Is yes, that, that, yes. Oh, okay, to this okay, day, yeah. people will have, um, people of a certain age will have debates about that. Um, yeah. that that's all very much passed me by, which is why I didn't get the gag. But oh, right. Did you, did you, were you sharp as attack on all of that with the people or did you, were you, was your brain tripping over its No, I, I, I felt for the uh, actress and I have to say I did spot a bit of a bump in the edit, which made me wonder whether she'd retaken that uh, mm. shopping list uh, for that's how it sort of came across a bit um, be, because there was that jump uh, in in her bearing and um, but you know I wouldn't blame uh, any actor who had a, a slight fluff on that uh, it was quite a challenge but it, it illustrates the limitation of the show it, it's not quite addressing what you're saying but um, you know they have to have a lot of generic stuff because they are only shooting those two extra scenes or whatever it is they can't shoot the whole of it close to transmission so you have a lot of stuff where margaret thatcher does this which is what she does mm. and so and so does this and you know you heard the rest i do wonder whether is that why the audience was somewhat subdued because maybe it was shot scene by scene or out of sequence or something like that 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 made it a bit more indigestible uh no they will have done it in story order with the exception of those uh, last minute scenes mm. um and the story will have to have been written in such a way that those scenes can't substantially change the plot, can they? So there's, there's sort of add-ons, bolt-ons, rather than fundamentally changing anything. Yeah. Um, I just wonder whether uh, yeah, maybe the audience uh, is struggling to keep up a bit. Because it is quite cerebral, isn't it? And you need to, you need to get the references. And... Um, Maybe for series one, when, lest, lest we forget, none of the audience, by definition, can have seen the show. Um, they, they don't quite know what they're going to. So people could be a bit more picky later on when they knew what the beast was. Yeah, I, I, just, I just wonder, I'm, I'm trying to, just trying to guess whether the audience were, were subdued because the bar wasn't open or because, <laughs> you know, because they do, don't they? I mean, they... they they do tend to oil oil audiences quite well, don't they? Uh, yes, it uh, you know it lowers the threshold of laughter, doesn't it? Like nothing else. <laughs> How else do we get through a comedy slab? Yeah, exactly. It lowers my <laughs> underpants, to be honest with you. But uh, <laughs> I don't I, wish to know. That. I don't like to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, hats off to Hayden Gwynn for was she playing Alex with that uh, great long list to remember, remember, as well as all the other lines, of course. Yes, yeah, apparently she walked into the first day of rehearsals and said, I'm hiding, and somebody said, well, I can see your feet sticking out the curtains. <laughs> when she saw the script, she said, with those long lists, I'm definitely hiding. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna right, hide on, on which terrible tacky joke, um, we must draw things to a conclusion, must we not? Unless you, did you, did you want to do an up sum for the jury? No, I, I, the only other thing I would, I'd put in my notes... Well, I put lots of other things mm. in my notes, but the other thing I wanted to mention was mm. um, a couple of things, actually. I, I fe sorry, I felt it was, and I'm not saying this is, this is a bad thing, but I felt it was theatrical. Well, sitcoms were in those days particularly, but mm. uh, anything with a studio audience, you could say, tends towards theatricality. Yeah, I, I really, got the, really got the feel for that. And the, the other thing that... that I kind of felt, and it was difficult to know because there weren't that many political references, but there seemed to be in those days, it seemed to be more even-handed uh, about poking fun at the whole political class. Whereas I think now we've got into this kind of rut where it's all about um, attacking right-wing politics. And I think that's, I think that's, a, I still think that's a problem mm. be because I think, you know, you will inevitably alienate um, you know, at least half your audience, or a, certainly a significant portion of your audience, and and I don't think it's good for business. But I think you know this this even handedness. I think there was the, the, there appears to be, and as I say, it's just based on this. I'd have to go back and watch other episodes, mm. um, because it's always it's always difficult, isn't it? Because one one party will be in power, and that tends to be the one that you will um, 
attack maybe more. So, mm. you know, I, I, I don't know. But it's 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 a nowadays I think political comedies. That's why he's it it's so stayed and stuck in a rut for me. But yeah, I did I did get the feeling that it was kind of more of an an, an even handedness with this. Right. Well, before we hit record on this podcast, you mentioned Nick Revel. Yeah. And I didn't quite know uh, in what connection, but um, as you explained to me, he's credited as a writer. I think, were you saying later in the series? I think Or so. later series? Yeah, later series. I kind of get the impression that that's what it was, or certainly one of the additional, like additional material writers. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm just seeing it now on IMDb. He's... Um, uh, looks like he was drafted from the second series right up to 1996 so something like five or six series but but not not the first one i was going to say i remember him as a stand up i've dusted this off before now because i i find it amazing and just so lucky that uh, I, I especially getting involved in something called the comedy slab all these years later but that i was there at the uh, the white heat of the uh, alternative comedy boom uh, of which he was a part and i remember him saying and this is apposite to what you were saying uh he did a joke once which is uh, you know alternative comedy was born out of uh, trying to demolish thatcher and uh, and here she still is and you know that joke would have been circa uh 1989 1990 before she um she uh gave up the ghost on 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 the gig or at least you know the men in gray suits came to her mm. so for nick revel uh, it was always about um and certainly you know clubs nightclubs uh, the comedy clubs th the comedy store didn't have the obligation that broadcasters do to be even-handed but for him it was always about attacking from the left um, so that's interesting, but uh, I, I guess it is different when you're writing for for TV, where there are certain. Well, th there was that balance then. I, th I think. I think. I don't know whether it's just the, the media that's available now, and, it, and and I just think. I think the American situation is quite interesting, where uh, when Trump was in power, you know, the the the, the orange man is bad movement was was at its its height and mm. in not only in comedy but on tv programs and in the media um everything was there was every day there was a, a major trump story and lots of other minor ones as well and you've got biden in power now in the united states mm. and it just seems to get a free pass on everything and you just kind of think this is just terrible and then that's that's when you realize how bad the skew is um and and you know the, the the landscape that you're living on i suppose but um which which is fine if it's the echo chamber of what you want to hear but of course if it if it isn't you just kind of think i mean at, at worst it's it's contrary to your your own views and at best um it can be um just kind of um repetitive rhetoric can't it really you know for, for, mm. for i guess anyway that's a huge topic which doubtless will return to as they say on the wireless um bringing this uh, meeting to some kind of uh, conclusion marks out of five please mm, well you see i'm starving now i want a chocolate bar now you mentioned a huge topic but um <laughs> hazelnut in every bite <laughs> do they still make those or are I, we going to have to put footnotes like this show does i google it what's the matter with you i, I think <laughs> just just being chocolate bar topic um no i don't think i'm not sure now i'm gonna have to go and find i'll buy one for next week and see if i can yeah um or at least a small table around just to recompense you uh <laughs> out of five i would go for me oh i think this did not travel well i don't think it was ever expected to in a way um and it's a two for me mm -hmm. I don't know why you said it wasn't expected to. You mean you didn't expect it to? No, I don't think when they wrote it. I don't think. I don't think they think. Oh, I wonder what they'll make of this in twenty twenty two. Do you know what I mean? I don't think it's that kind of. Um, uh, uh, it, it was written for the time at the time mm. with the time in mind, wasn't it? 
Um, but with the time in mind, I think it's time I gave my score. Uh, <laughs> well, we all try and translate what you just said. And um, I'm going to give it three and a half because I think it does stand up. So uh, okay. as per usual, we can't agree on anything. Actually, there oh, are exceptions I don't agree to with that. that but... I think we can agree on everything. Well, yeah. I, I, in fact, I don't agree with that statement, oh. uh, my statement. So um, oh, yeah, right. I'm with you on that. I agree with you <laughs> okay. in correcting me. Um, OK, so that's a mammoth five and a half out of ten. Well, that's over half marks yeah um so if that's the uh, exam pass mark then uh, it, it has passed and it's didn't passed neil pearson look young as well and also oh gosh and his haircut and he sounded like he was speaking in a room full of helium which is uh which is, <laughs> which is always the way with these older things yes uh, for yeah, for uh, for next week's homework then yes uh, i won't keep you suspenders i'm going brand new adrian going brand new Oh, that's a um, bit risque. Hot off the press. Um, although all as they do now on the on the iPlay with the BBC, all all of the episodes are available. If I said to you Tim Key, have you seen the latest thing with Tim Key, Daisy May I, Cooper? I um I think I have, but I can't remember because I don't have much recall <laughs> if I haven't watched the show. All right. Jam. Uh, written by the Gibbons brothers, Neil and Rob, of course, who, uh, yeah, who yeah. wrote uh, Alan Partridge's Alpha Popper. And some guy called Steve Coogan has also uh, had a hand in writing it as well. Uh, stars Tim Key, Daisy May Cooper, Jessica Hines, Daniel Rigby, uh, and Twain Barrett. And it's a brand new BBC comedy. I think it's screened on BBC One at the moment, but it's certainly on the iPlayer. It's called Witchfinder. 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 Um, so it's set back in the. Uh, where is it set back in? Where were the witch finders? The uh, uh, so sixteenth century. Was it really? That's there was a witch finder general, but it turned out he just appointed himself. Um, oh, fine. All uh, right. A bit, <laughs> like, boots. bit like a uh, bit like a program controller in radio, isn't it? They just oh, I give myself couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> Uh, so, which finder, Tim Key, and uh, it is. I think it's available for about eleven months on the iPlayer. But which, which, which finder? Ah, which, ah. which? You'll have to find out next week. <laughs> Tune in to which, which finder. <laughs> well, no, you've got to tell us which episode. Oh, sorry, uh, series one, episode one. Okay, we're going in at the ground floor. Your yeah, favourite? I thought. Well, only because it's a new series, we don't know what it's all about, and we're pro- yeah, neither yeah, of us fine. will have come across it. I thought it'd probably be prudent. Prudent. Ah, oh, that reminds me of Gordon Brown if we're talking politics. Dear Prudent. <laughs> uh, right, won't you come out to play? Series one, episode one of which find out which, which you'll find uh, on <laughs> I play. Oh, oh God, who writes this stuff? Oh, it's us. Um, so it uh, falls to me to mention anti-social media. We are at Comedy Slab on Twitter. Do follow us there and you'll find the delightful Spencer Jones in the dentist chair, um, amongst other things. So follow us on Twitter at Comedy Slab uh, and that's the same handle at Comedy Slab uh, on our Facebook page. Do please like that. Um, do Give us, if you'd be so kind, a, a generous star rating on Apple Podcasts stroke iTunes. That'd be lovely and a bit of blurb supporting your generous rating. And uh, personal recommendations, friends, family and so on, family, pet dogs, whatever. Uh, just pass the word on or the, the bark is better than its bite. And, uh, and, and, and your dog will love you even more than when you give it chocolate drops. I can assure you of that. But don't give it the real chocolate because it's poisonous to dogs. Just to... Is that so? Well, I mean, it's, it's just a waste of real chocolate. should be in human gobs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't give it the dog. What's the matter with you? Uh, Spreaker, <laughs> Stitcher, iHeartRadio are some of the places that you can find us. And don't forget, if you go to your favourite uh, podcast catcher, uh, or player, or whatever it is that you do, you should be able to find us there. If you can't, let us know, and we'll make sure that we go round and duff them up until they actually take our podcast. That's normally the way we do business around these parts. <laughs> uh, that's it for the Comedy Slam podcast this week. Thank you so much for your time. I, I'm buoyed by ICVX's commissioning policy, so I'm off to finish off uh, writing my sitcom about a, uh, a Lithuanian <laughs> Jewish dentist. <laughs> who uh, becomes a zombie after being <laughs> bitten by a semi-Christian... Um, uh, no, I've run out of... I, run out I'm of, in. I'm in. I mean, I'd give it five out of five straight away you're just on it, the you? premise of the show. You're loving it. You're uh, loving yeah. It. Uh, if you were trying to make something really unfunny, you failed. Um, and I am about... I just feel I should... Uh, 
think of a headline so that when people are listening to this in 30 years, yeah. uh, they can say, oh, right, well, uh, that just proves the comedy slab wasn't made to last more than a week. Um, I would love to say uh, that that nasty man Putin uh, has disappeared, certainly by the time you hear this podcast, and I hope that's a matter of days rather than um, years. But, hey, um, that's uh, casting a bit of a dark shadow over the show. Say something funny. Banana? <laughs> Wibble? Wobble? <laughs> Hubble? <laughs> Up telescope. Is this group therapy? <laughs> Down the corridor, love. First oh, on the left. Thank you. Sorry to bother. Bye. <laughs>